Hi guys, I am back with another declutter video. Today it is all about larger palettes. If you missed my smaller palettes video, because I got rid of over 50% of my collection in that one, I will link to it down below. Today we're tackling the other half of my collection because there's a lot to go through. YouTube is my job. I've been collecting makeup for a long time and I just didn't want to get rid of everything. And then when I started wanting to get rid of things, I was like, I should hold on to it and do a declutter video so that you can actually see me get rid of it. So this is a great way to figure out what I like, what I don't like. Uh, uh, and it's a great way for me to not only make space in my tiny apartment, but kind of see what else is in my collection to reach for for new videos. So as always, anything that is unused will be donated to a shelter for women in need here in Toronto. The rest will go to friends and family. And I've said this before, but generally these videos are pre-filmed quite a bit in advance. So I get a lot of people asking me for the products, but it is long gone to a good home. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the entire collection. I actually had to kind of pile things up because some of the palettes are big and there's obviously quite a few of them. And right off the bat, I'll tell you that there's some palettes missing from here. And I was just searching around, believe it or not, there are more palettes besides this in my house. And I mean, like my apartment is 600 square feet, hence why I'm decluttering, but also where the hell are they? I'm annoyed. I know that the Tartlet toasted I don't know where that is, but I would be keeping that anyway. So anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into decluttering. I have not counted yet. I will count at the end to show you what's staying and what's going. But as always, I'll be starting off showing you some of my favorite palettes. So this palette really took me by surprise. It is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. And it's not that I didn't expect to like it, but I didn't expect to love it as much as I do. And I continue to reach for it. As you can see, it's well loved. I just think truly it has an incredible selection of shades, both basic and mattes, transitions, all that kind of stuff, but also fun colors. And there's enough shimmers, enough mattes, there's brights, darks. It has everything I need. The formula is really great. I've done a bunch of looks with this too. So like I said in my last, declutter I will link to as much as I can down below but there's just so much to go through but also I just love the packaging because it's simple it's sleek it's not gonna get particularly dirty and they just fit so much in a great little package so I still really love this so obviously it's staying one of my other favorite palettes is the Too Faced Just Peachy palette. This is all mattes, but again, a really gorgeous selection of shades, a nice gradient. They really pop on my skin. I know when I did my three looks, one palette for this video, or for this palette, yeah, for this palette, the Just Peachy shade really blew me away because I was expecting it not to translate on my skin. Really blendable, really buildable, uh, cute packaging as well, so this will stay. I know I normally talk about my favorites in the beginning, but I should also talk about something that didn't work for me that will be going. It's the opposite of the Just Peachy, and that is the White Peach palette. I really wanted to love this. I know a lot of people were like, what the hell are those shades? I'm not excited. For some reason, I was super excited about this just because it was different. I was excited to try some new things, but it didn't feel completely out of my comfort zone. If you watch my Three Looks One palette video, however, there was just no depth to these shades at all. It added no definition to my eyes, no matter how much I built up. The only possible shade was the black, which is never my preference. So it was really disappointing. And it was interesting to hear because I said, you know, maybe it's going to be great for fair skin girls uh, or guys, but a lot of people comment on my video and they're like, no, it didn't work for me. But it didn't seem like the pigmentation was off. So I don't know. Very perplexed about this palette. It was a letdown, but uh, the Just Peachy Mattes is incredible. So this one will go. Another classic old fave of mine is the Modern Renaissance. It's been duped a hundred million times now with good reason, I guess, if you wanna put it that way, but just really gorgeous shades. A lot of mattes in here, and if you've been watching my channel for any time, you know that I love just the warm rusties, the pinks, the oranges. So this really kind of ignited that uh, excitement for those types of shades for me. Uh, so yeah, it's really great. I like a lot of the dupes, but I still of course love the original. My only qualm about this palette was that the shimmers 
were nothing to really call home about but I didn't even really care just because the mattes were so gorgeous the shimmers added a nice little shimmer and they weren't really meant to be like crazy metallics anyway so it's just it's such a classic palette I know I talked about a ColourPop palette in my last one I meant I tried to group everything together but a few things slipped through um, but this good sport palette really really impressed me again I really love the shade selection in here but especially because it had different shades that I hadn't really played around with much and this shade really really impressed me it's kind of like this coppery shade but it has like blue glitter in it so different and similarly to the yes please palette uh just really great blendable shades good colors uh super affordable it's like 12 dollars american and uh, i don't hear many people mentioning this so i really like this palette so it will stay I'm really annoyed because I have my two or two of four Lorac palettes here. I have another one there that I'll mention momentarily. The Lorac Pro 2 and Unzipped Gold. And I think I got, no, I got Lorac Pro 1 first. And I don't know where it is. I still own it. I have no idea where it is. But the gold shade in that ignited my love for gold eyeshadows. So that was why I picked up the um, Unzipped Gold, which has so many gorgeous gold shades in there. I used it a ton, along with then wanting to purchase the Lorac Pro 2, albeit more cool toned. I was just obsessed with Lorac at the time. And I think I was like, making people in the United States buy it for me that I knew who lived there. I can't remember exactly how I acquired these palettes, but a um, little bit trickier to get your hands on in Canada. You can now order from the Ulta website, but gonna be keeping these Lorac makes uh, really, really gorgeous shadows, but obviously well loved. This is the Lorac uh, Desert Sun palette. Is that what it's called? No. Desert Sunset palette. And my friend actually bought this for me in LA when we were at Namie's. I was like exploring Namie's for the first time, having <laughs> the time of my life. Uh, and she picked this up for me, so I'm definitely gonna be keeping it. Really, really gorgeous shades. It's one of her favorite palettes as well. So always cool to know, like if you're a makeup junkie and you have other friends that are either makeup junkies or even not, It's I, I find it so interesting to see what other people are interested in uh, kind of in your life. Cause I talk to so many other beauty bloggers and so many subscribers, but knowing what the people in my life kind of gravitate towards is very interesting to me. So uh, I'm gonna be keeping this. I can't believe we've gotten this far and I have not mentioned this guy, another well-loved palette. And some of these palettes that are a little bit old and dusty, it's not that I'm gonna be reaching for these all the time, but they have a special place in my heart and uh, you know, YouTube is my job now, but it started as just a pure passion for loving makeup. So a lot of these are very special to me. So this one, I've actually almost hit pan on the shade Sultry. It was one I discovered like matte brown. So this is definitely gonna be sticking around. Not exactly a color palette that I would like to die to get my hands on now, but I do really like this and the Balm Makes Great Shadows adorable packaging. Let's just go through the rest of my Balm palettes while we're here, I guess. Uh, this kind of is more my style for the time being. I did use this in, in like a Instagram does my picks my makeup video and I was so impressed with this palette really really loved it I haven't been reaching for it much and I really need to that's a big part of why I do these declutters as well as not only to clear out space and to show you what I like and don't like but it also kind of reminds me of what's in my collection to break out for videos so this will stay so continuing on with the bomb this is getting tough for me because I just again the bomb is one of those brands that I just really really love especially their packaging so i'm gonna hold on to this palette it's kind of a newish one i used it in a video a little while back and by new i mean like within the past year uh it is the meat matchmaker so i'm gonna keep that <sighs> i guess i'll get rid of this although i really like it i think someone gave it to me as a gift and i haven't used it so i, I will get rid of that but it is a beautiful palette if you're looking for some mattes this is a newer one and again, in the, on the missing palette list is the iced tea palette, which I used about a month ago for an Instagram tutorial. I did a great blue tutorial with it because uh, I wanted to use the cooler tones. This one is the warmer tone palette, albeit it's not incredibly warm. <sighs> I guess I'll get rid of it. I hate getting rid of the bomb palettes. And like, look at the little cups. They're so cute. But yeah. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'll keep the, the blue one wherever that is in my apartment. I have two more palettes here from the Balm. They're the Alternative Rock Face Palettes. And I'm actually gonna keep both of these because it's very rare that I can find face palettes that uh, every shade works for me and that like don't annoy me in terms of shape or size. I really like the eyeshadow colors in here. I can see myself actually traveling with both of these. So I'm gonna keep them both. Let's move back to the Too Faced palettes that I have. These are some more of their kind of tin packaging. So I'm going to get rid of the Chocolate Bonbon just because I don't ever use it. 
but it's got some nice shades but again just a little too cool for me sweet peach i'm definitely keeping really really like this uh this palette here and then i'm gonna keep the chocolate bar as well this is actually i bought this i happened to come across an old video of mine where i was saying that i was annoyed that i bought the thicker version because after this version came out they shortly redesigned the original chocolate bar to be thinner and i was like i have the thick one and it also doesn't have the names on it because they hadn't done that first so this is an oldie but a goodie but definitely gonna hold on to it here we have some more Anastasia palettes. I really love Soft Glam. Uh, it can look potentially to some people a little bit bland, but I absolutely loved it. I used the shimmers like crazy. They're so much more metallic than the Modern Renaissance. The mattes were incredible. Really, really beautiful. Just a great solid palette. It's dirty though, which is annoying. <laughs> uh, the Mario palette, I think we all loved or a lot of us loved. So I'm gonna be holding onto that. It was limited edition. Oh, the ever controversial subculture. People were like literally mad at me that I didn't rag on this video. I'm like, what is the state of YouTube that like an honest review is only one where you're saying something negative? I'm like, I liked it, guys. <laughs> Anyways, I liked it, so I'm gonna keep it. So, haha. -ha. Let's go to some more iconic palettes from Urban Decay. If you can see, uh, there's a little stain on my freaking blanket. Not that it matters. It's just for decluttering. But for some reason, my other declutter pal palette declutter, uh, so many of them are broken and got everywhere. Uh, gonna be holding on to the Naked Heat. Really like that. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the shades in the Naked 2, I didn't even own any of the Naked palettes uh, up until Heat, I think. No, I bought the three and I didn't like it and I returned it, but they just never had enough mattes, never had enough warm for me, but I did get this at an Urban Decay event and they kind of personalized it for me. So I'm gonna hold on to it for that. And then this is the newest palette, the Naked Reloaded, which I actually surprisingly liked. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about it. Uh, it's a little bit on the cool tone side, but that's not a bad thing. Like to me, cool tone is not a bad word, but cool tone to me can mean a little bit too fair for my skin tone or it's not gonna show up or translate properly. That's why I tend to go towards warmer shades because they just pop on my skin better um, than like dusty kind of like cool browns. But I felt like this was really gorgeous and I really liked the look I created with it. And I'm obsessed with this like cushy packaging. I think it's so, so gorgeous. So these will stay. More palettes here from Urban Decay. I, oh, speaking of broken stuff, I am gonna get rid of this. I actually really do like it. And I really love the face products that were in here. Ugh. Ugh. But first of all, that's broken. And second of all, I find it to be quite similar ish to the naked cherry not exactly the same naked cherry is back there but i do have a blog post comparing the two so this will go i'll get, you know give it to a friend or something there's nothing wrong with it but i have naked cherry so that's fine and as i mentioned i do like naked cherry i will be keeping this uh, i will get rid of this it's the ud uh urban decay nocturnal palette i swatched it i don't think i ever even used it gonna hold on to the um jean michel jean <laughs> jean michel basquiat palette i actually met a subscriber in the street like last summer i was walking down the street and they were like samantha and i was like oh my god hi and she was actually wearing a uh, jean michel basquiat i'm hoping hoping i say that right i looked it up uh t-shirt so then i was like hey do you want some of the makeup collection like did you get it and i had been sent it so i sent her the neutral palette so that's where that is so i am going to keep this it was a pretty cool collaboration absolutely love the packaging it's like so fun so cool but again not too bulky or anything so i'll be holding on to this I cannot get rid of this, the smoked. Like, did I ever use it? I don't know. But does that matter? No, look at this packaging. Like it's, it's iconic. It's gotta stay. And then this one, I'm a little torn about. I actually quite liked this palette. I liked the shades that were in here. I really loved the look I created with the two blues. But I think I'm gonna, I just hate that it's a circle but it has a lot of good shades. Maybe actually I will keep it. I'm gonna keep it because it's, you know, pretty colorful. Lastly from Urban Decay, oh, I forgot to get rid of that. This is their holiday palette from 2017. You're gonna be able to see yourself. Oh, there's me. I wanna see my hair, not done at all. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of this just because the packaging is annoying. Again, I really liked the look I created with this. I love these types of shades, uh, but it's just, it's kind of annoying, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I should have pointed this out in the beginning, but this is another palette that I love, the NYX Off Tropic palette. Again, another missing palette. Oh. I'm reminding you, take out clothes in the dryer. Alexa, stop. 
Has anyone else set Alexa reminders to do <laughs> chores? Otherwise my clothes will sit in the laundry for a million years. But anyways, um, I love this palette. I love the neon one. Don't know where it is. I used it in a video like last month, but I love both those palettes. Uh, great, great, great quality from the drugstore. Beautiful color, so this will definitely stay. Zoom you in a little bit. You're a little bit far. Uh, so these are the Physicians Formula Butter Eyeshadows. New as of this year. Really nice palettes. I think I'm going to keep... This one definitely has all the mattes I want. I wish this green was in here because this, this green really pleases me. And I like those two there. Like, I wish they would kind of combine these palettes, but I'm gonna hold on to both of them. They're still pretty brand new. They're really good. I forgot to show this palette in the Too Faced section. I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, Too Faced always comes out with these at the holidays. I'm never particularly into them. It's not that there's anything wrong with them. Like, the quality is fine, but I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Two palettes that I need to give more love for sure. I don't know if I've ever used these in a video, and I have the blush palette too. Uh, these are from Juvia's Place. Juvia's Place. Uh, I think my friend Shell picked these up for me when she was at IMATS in New York. But yeah, I definitely need to use both of these in a video. I think like I've used this one just in my life and didn't film it, but that doesn't count. So yeah, definitely need to make use of these. It's a super cool brand. Another ColourPop palette. This one is the, what is it called? Double Entendre palette. I like this, uh, but I think I have these other shades in my other ColourPop palettes and I do have a like single shades from ColourPop as well that I'd be able to kind of create this so I think I'm gonna give this like I think like a friend would really like this because it's like a good basic uh basic palette so I will get rid of it but I do still recommend it moving into some kind of dupe palettes I guess it's from the brand Bad Habit uh, I was talking about this in my last video so I won't go into like all my thoughts on the brand etc etc you can see I did a review and I talked about it in my last declutter but what I will say is I really like the palette. So definitely holding on to this. It is a dupe for the Huda Beauty, <laughs> very messy. I don't know if I really use this uh, Athena palette much, but I definitely want to. So I'm gonna hold on to that. The only palette that I didn't really love from them was this, I think, the Royals palette, which is supposed to be a dupe for the Modern Renaissance. And there's so many dupes for Modern Renaissance, like both uh, CoverGirl and Wet n Wild did incredible jobs of their Modern Renaissance dupes if you're looking for one. This is not it though. So this will go. I haven't used a few of these. I want to make use of this. No, wait, is this supposed to be subculture? Maybe I'll hold on to this. Is it too late though to compare it to subculture? I think it's too late. Do people care anymore? You're either saying yes or no and I have no idea. I can't predict. You know what? I think I'm, I love the shades though, but I did like subculture, but maybe this is even better. Because although I liked Subculture, it wasn't like the easiest palette to work with. So maybe I'll actually give that a try. Uh, this is their dupe for the Urban Decay Heat, which was a good dupe, good palette. But I am going to get rid of it because I do have Urban Decay. And then this is the Arabesque, which is supposed to be a dupe for the Soft Glam, which I also have. So I am going to get rid of this because uh, I can donate these to the shelter where they haven't been used yet. They're great quality. So I'd like to give them to somebody who needs it more than me. Now, I have no idea where the other Tarte palettes are, and that annoys me. But uh, this is the original? No, the second Tarte palette. I think I might have gotten rid of the original, but I know I have the Toasted somewhere. Uh, I'm going to... See, if I had the toasted here in front of me, I would probably get rid of this, but because it's not here and I'm like, where is it? And I don't want to get rid of like all of my Tarte palettes, I am going to hold on to this. It's not that it like gets me like super pumped up because it is a little bit cool tone, but it is a nice basics palette. I like the toasted better though, so, but I will, I will keep this. Two awesome palettes here that are going to be staying, the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. Uh, I really love this. The shimmers in here are awesome. The mattes are awesome. If you have deeper skin, this is such a good highlighting shade because cream shades sometimes can be so pale. So that's an incredible, incredible shade. Like my favorite shade in the palette. I know it's odd, but it's unique. Uh, if you have a skin tone to mine or deeper, you will appreciate that for sure. And then the, the Fenty Beauty uh, Moroccan palette. I really like this as well. And I mean, it's Fenty, so she's going to stay. Now I'm a little torn on these palettes. They are the Violet Voss palettes and I bought this one first at IMATS, I think it was. And again, oh my God, surprise, it's warm shades. So I liked this a lot and then they came out with this and I was so pumped on this. I think I did a three looks. Yeah, I did a three looks one palette on this. And the thing I noticed about this palette 
it's not that it's bad, but there's not enough mattes in here. There's too many shimmers for me anyways. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I think there's other things out there, but at the same time, you can always reach for a matte brown, but like I don't always wanna reach for two palettes or use a bronzer. For the most part, I want everything to be in my palette unless it's like an all glitter palette an all shimmer palette or something like that but this like to me looks like it's trying to be a completed palette I do feel like it's missing a couple things I am however going to keep both of them after both of that uh, I don't reach for them very much but I don't know I want to keep them a bunch of makeup revolution here the first that's obviously saying is the Emily edit. This reminds me of the Born to Run palette in the sense that it has a great, uh, interesting selection of shades, but still very, very balanced. And I'm a gigantic Emily, no, I was about to say Emily edit. I'm a gigantic Emily Noel fan. Oh, my nail matches. Uh, and she actually reached out to me before this launch and sent it to me and it just meant the absolute world to me. Uh, I did actually declutter the other palette though because it had the bronzer in there. That wasn't really a great shade for, my, shade for me along with the highlighter, so I gave it to a friend who I know, knew would get more use out of it, but I absolutely love this palette. Uh, this one, what is this? I think this is, yeah. So this is like, I did a dupe video on this back in like 2013 when my channel first started. And this is more or less a dupe for the Lorac Pro 1. The shadows are not the same uh, quality. They're not as good. And I think Makeup Revolution has actually upped their quality since. But it is an okay palette. I am going to get rid of it though because I... I better at the very least have my Lorac Pro around here somewhere. This was a palette a lot of people recommended to me and I think... Orabel, the Canadian retailer, sent it to me. Really cool. Kind of reminds me of the Emily Edit Born to Run from Urban Decay type of style palette where it has tons of warms but then a few fun shades in there too. So I'm going to hold on to this and put it to uh, the test or use it, whatever you want to call it. Then I have some of these Revolution palettes. I'm going to hold on to this one. It is the Reloaded Neutrals 2. And I think these are essentially trying to be dupes for probably Urban Decay palettes. This might be Naked Heat, but definitely is not like shade for shade dupe. This is definitely trying to be like a modern renaissance. I'm going to get rid of it. That is in Reloaded Iconic Vi Vitality. It's a weird name for a palette. And then this one kind of is like subculture vibes, which there's a crack shade in here. So I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, and that is Reloaded Iconic Division. But overall, I do really like Makeup Revolution. Um eyeshadows and these I bought on the Tam Beauty website had no issues shipping to Canada in case you're curious. Kind of a random smattering of palettes here now so the sun is coming out and things are getting very bright. Uh, this one's gonna go the L'Oreal palette. I talked about the uh, Enchanted palette in my last eyeshadow palette declutter, the kind of smaller palette declutter, and that is a really great palette. This one eh, is kind of, it's whatever so that will go. I have from Kat Von D, these are the Shade and Light and then the shimmer and light palettes, I think that's what they were called. So one is completely matte, uh, which is this one. And then this one is partially matte. No, I think this one is basically all shimmer with the exception of that shade. So this one will definitely go. This one I'm torn on because I'm not really reaching for Kat Von D products. Like, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing. If you're curious, you can Google it. I just don't know how I feel about it. I really loved her and her brand for a long time. And now I'm just kind of like, ugh, eye roll. So. I, I'm gonna hold on to it. I mean like I, I paid the money for it So I'm gonna keep it and this one. I'm definitely keeping I actually dropped this flat on its face when I was bringing it out here Sorry, I think my fridge just turned on I'm filming this in my kitchen because it's the only place I have space But this is the Mi Vida Loca remix palette and I bought this Christmas of 2016 And I was buying so much makeup at the time that after I purchased this I literally called my credit card company like I called up Visa and I was like, I need a new credit card number. And they were like, why? And I was like, cause I can't stop shopping and I have my credit card number memorized. <laughs> like that is, <laughs> that was the level of self-control I had. And you'll see actually on here, I did a palette bingo with this uh, a while back now with my friend Shell and we did like a randomized look picking five of these shades but I really love this palette. I had so much fun with this when it came out. I did like a review and a three looks one palette on it before those videos even existed on my channel back in like 2016 when I lived in uh, Newfoundland. So no 2015. Wow yeah no it was 2015 that I bought this so I still really like this palette uh, and I'm gonna hold on to it. It was like 80 bucks so you're staying. Bunch of random palettes here. I had no idea this palette still existed. I was gonna get rid of it if it didn't exist anymore, but I'm gonna keep it. It's the It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty palette. Remember this? 
I remember being obsessed with these shades. Again, it was like in the early days when I was like trying to figure out what kind of shades I liked and I was like, I don't know what these are, but I'm into it. So they're all matte and then they have this transforming pearl shade. It's almost like the modern renaissance, but pre-modern renaissance, but still equally as dirty. So this will stay. I also loved this. I think this is one of the best like YouTuber collabs around because of the quality uh, and also the price. It was just so good. It's the Carly Bybel BH Cosmetics. <gasps> You know what, I didn't wear that shade that much anyways. I'm honestly just gonna empty it out. I'm definitely keeping this. The highlighters in here were so, so good. Uh, the shadows were good, not like incredible, but the highlighters were made this palette worth it. It was like $12, so definitely keeping that. This is definitely going. I have this and the white peach palette, like like I said, like I've been holding onto these products with every intention to do a declutter. And I just see it and I'm like, I gotta film that declutter. I gotta get this out of my house. And this is one of those products. I love most of Clarence makeup. I absolutely love Clarence skincare. This palette, however, was bleh. The packaging is like brown. What is this? Like, what what is this? You know what I mean? Yeah, the shades were okay, but it's just annoying <laughs> and that will be going uh, and this will also be going uh, I didn't really particularly like this either. It's from Becca holiday 2017. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of it all again Nothing wrong with these, but I'm just not gonna be reaching for it. So this will go. Okay. We're getting through it We're almost done. Uh, these are all of my makeup geek shadows. These are definitely staying I love the way this palette looks if I was to ever create an eyeshadow palette, it would look something like this <laughs> Uh, I just, it's very pleasing to me. Makeup Geek makes amazing shadows. Uh, similar to this palette also would be like my dream palette, something along these lines. These are all ColourPop singles, so I love these. Great single eyeshadows. This is from Pure. It was a collaboration with a makeup artist who I'm not particularly familiar with. Uh, it's a nice palette, but I just haven't reached for it, so I'm gonna get rid of it. This one from Makeup Forever. I'm gonna hold on to it because in my last declutter I got rid of some Makeup Forever shades, so I like to have a nice variety, so I'll keep that. This is Deck of St Scarlet. I think it's a subscription service, and I actually really liked this palette. Mostly I appreciate that they separate the creams from the powders, like bless you. Uh, I am, however, going to get rid of this, just, I don't know, I don't ever reach for it, and I don't think you can even repurchase it. This palette is the one that haunts my dreams. If you've watched my channel for any period of time, you'll know this is the first high-end eyeshadow palette I ever bought, and then I hated it, because, and I've told this story so many times, I'm not even gonna get into why I bought it and blah, 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 but I'm gonna hold on to it. Even though it's falling apart and I hate it, it's my first one, so you'll stay, but I hate you. And then lastly, I have these big daddies here. So, first, firstly, this is the Mary Kay, well, this doesn't really have a name, I don't think, I can't remember what they were calling this. Um, but this was a palette I kind of built myself. So you purchase the individual shades, like they sent, sent me this to review. Um, but you can purchase individual shades. So they have face, eye, blush, cheek, bronzer. So I really like what I created. I like my little layout here. So I'm gonna hold on to that. Uh, this palette I really liked from Pure. It's the Love Your Selfie 2. I thought it had great eyeshadows. Loved the face products in here, but it is, however, bulky. It was one of those palettes that came with like mascara, lip gloss, which of which of both of both which I really liked of which both of which I really liked both anyways whatever I've been talking a lot today uh but it is very bulky so I am going to get rid of it but it was a great palette or it is a great palette this one from Avon I was going to keep but then again I looked online and it doesn't exist anymore and I was really surprised by this palette this looks exactly like a NARS uh face palette that I have from years ago but I was really like not expecting to like this because these types of palettes are generally garbage and I don't like that it has these cream products here but I did really love the powder products in here but upon looking it up it doesn't exist anymore uh, and it's not like it was like some super special limited edition thing to me so I am going to get rid of it because it's not something I feel like many of you will have. This bulky guy here is from Tarte Holiday some year. How does one open this? And I'm getting rid of this for sure. Um, I hate how bulky this packaging is. These face products are too light for me. None of these shades really appeal to me, so bye bye Oh, this is going, staying. Uh, NYX Beauty School Dropout, again, another big palette. I was expecting to hate that I actually really liked. Uh, I was holding onto this because I didn't have a lot of NYX eyeshadows at the time, but now that I do have a bunch of NYX eyeshadows, I will get rid of this. 
I don't think it's as good as like a palette that you'd buy individually or a blush or a bronzer you'd buy individually, but still a very good palette and not too bulky considering what you're getting in here. Then this is the classic Coastal Scents. Remember Coastal Scents? That was the jam. This is the 120 eyeshadow palette. Everybody was using these back in the day. You get like every single color and I think I'm gonna keep it just because like you never know what's gonna come up for like Halloween and stuff. I don't know, I haven't actually played with it in such a long time. Let me know if you'd like to like see it in a video. I don't know, maybe that would be funny to revisit. But, oh, it smells horrible. Oh, it smells like, you know, when I do like those Dollarama makeup videos sometimes, like it smells like kind of poison, but I'm gonna hold on to it just in case Halloween, you know. I love these two palettes here from Sephora. These are the pro palettes. So one is the colorful, I think it was called or something. Oh my God, what a mess. So messy though. And then this was the warm. And I absolutely love both of these. I hate that they like, those. don't give them names. You know, like don't give me this, it's stupid. But I love both of these palettes so much. Definitely a high price tag, but really great palettes. We'll definitely be keeping these. And then lastly, I have the Jaclyn Hill palette, which I've actually never, you know what? Mm, okay, no, I'll hold on to it. Uh, I've actually never used, even though it's super dirty, <laughs> but I've never used this. Uh, Morphe sent me a huge package a while back. I'm not like on their PR list or anything, but they did send me a package a while back and I really was planning on doing like a full face of Morphe and then I just was kind of like meh. Like I really like a lot of their brushes. Like there's a few of those brushes that are absolute staples in my collection, but I don't know. And I think it looks like a great palette. I think there's a lot of good shades in here, but I think I'm going to get rid of it because I think there's somebody else out there who is a bigger Morphe and or Jaclyn Hill fan than me. And I have tons and tons of eyeshadows. Not that I'm not a Jaclyn Hill fan. I mean, she's, um, she's hilarious, but, uh, yeah, I think it's been long enough now and I haven't reached for it. So it's probably time to give it up. So here is the finished product. If you can kind of see the dividing line here between what's staying and what's go, or sorry, what's going and what's staying. Uh, not as plentiful as my last smaller palette declutter. And that's because a lot of these palettes are more special to me. Uh, just kind of the nature of this, you know, kind of size of palette is always just like the big, big one. So uh, there, I'm getting rid of 28 palettes and I'm keeping 44, I think it is. So pretty good, got rid of about, you know, 30% of my collection or so. The last one was just over 50%. So very happy with that. Again, not trying to like pare down my entire collection, just trying to like get rid of things I know I'm not gonna reach for, keep the special things to me and then keep the things that I need to do to be able to, you know, put up three videos a week. You have to have quite a collection of makeup to be able to do that kind of thing. So uh, that is uh, where we're ending up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, pretty happy to clear out my collection. I've actually since kind of organized the rest of my stuff and put it back into the drawers that I had it in. They were all stuffed and overflowing and now it all fits in there so nicely. So let me know if there was any palettes in this video that you would like me to put into action. I'm actually wearing that um, NARS palette that I almost got rid of and now I'm so glad that I didn't get rid of it because it is very, very pretty. <laughs> um, but, or was that the other video? Honestly, I can't remember. I filmed both of them yesterday. This may have been in my smaller palettes video and you're like, what the hell are you talking about? I think it actually was. I filmed them both yesterday at the same time to tackle it all at once. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my declutter playlist down below. And if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.